You are not nearly as cool. What is up, MFers? I hope you're having the best day of your entire life. I got some serious knowledge to drop on you today. So it's like 28 degrees, windy, cold, nasty, cloudy outside today. And I was gonna do this video because I, I've had a ton of requests lately from people. I get messages every day. I get Facebook, Instagram messages, and I love it. I try to get back to as many of you guys as I possibly can. Um, but everyone wants to know, how do you catch fish when it gets super, super cold outside? And honestly, like I've fished a couple terrible lakes lately. We haven't caught a lot of fish, but I've learned a ton of stuff from tournament fishing and just fishing in general uh, over the years that help you catch more fish when it's super, super cold as we get into later November like we're getting into now and into December. Pretty good looking little keeper on this guy here. Oh yeah, that keeper right there has been absolute money. Hit that thumbs up right now. If this gets to a thousand likes, I'm gonna do a video on how to create this keeper. It takes literally takes seconds to make this, and it's changed the way I've texted Rick. It's badass. Anyway, sorry, I get uh, easily distracted if you haven't noticed. Anyway, let's get into the video. Tip number one for how to catch more fish as it gets super, super cold is to slow down. I know it's something I've talked about a lot in my videos recently, but slowing down is going to be absolutely key to you getting more bites. Really soaking those baits, no matter what type of bait you're fishing, slowing down around those high percentage areas you have a ton of confidence in is going to be absolutely key whenever you're fishing in the colder water. So if you're flipping a, a Texas rig or flipping a jig, you're not gonna wanna be flipping that around real quick to cover a bunch of water. You're gonna want that bait to hit the bottom and you're gonna dead stick it or you're gonna slowly drag it in. So that's definitely gonna lend itself to a lot more slower moving baits, which we're about to get to here in a little bit. So definitely keep it in mind, slow down to get more bites. It's painful, I hate doing it, but you gotta freaking do it. So I made that number one because I feel slowing down is super, super important as the water cools down into the 40s and down into the 30s. Now, in the springtime, for whatever reason, in the pre-spawn phase, and late winter phase, we'll even call it, for whatever reason, sometimes the water's in like the high 30s, low 40s, you can catch a fish here and there, or even get on a decent pattern pulling a reaction bait, uh, like a trap or a chatterbait or something like that. But I, I just don't get those bites near as often late, late in the fall. Seems like as the bass's metabolism is slowing down, they almost over-exaggerate that process and they slow down a lot quicker than they want to speed up when that ice comes off in the spring around here. So that brings me to number two in the video today of how to catch bass when it gets super, super cold outside, and that is fishing more vertical cover with vertical baits in the water column. Now that might sound like Chinese to you, unless you speak Chinese and then it maybe sounds like Russian or something. I don't know, maybe you speak multiple languages. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, that might make zero sense to you at all. So let me explain what I mean by that. In cold weather, bass will relate so much more to steeper banks, steeper breaks and drop-offs, creek channel edges, stuff like that, than they did at any point in the season. So you're not going to be wanting to fish baits that work really well on a horizontal plane. What I mean by that is baits that you're just going to chunk out and wind back to the boat. Baits you're going to be fishing flats with, riprap banks with, stuff like that where you're just casting them out and reeling them in. Those baits are not going to be nearly as effective. My number one bait for fishing vertical types of cover like this, the jerk bait. A jerk bait is a bait that's an awesome bait because one, it, it's we can fish it really slow like we just talked about. So you can pull a jerk bait near this vertical types of uh, banks, these steeper 45 degree and greater angle banks, steeper man-made riprap banks, uh, or even out off the bank that drop where it goes from five to 15 or 20 feet. You can work that bait along that break, and those fish that are relating to that steeper break, it gives them a chance to look up visually at the jerk bait. You know, you, you almost never get bites on a jerk bait from fish that are above it or straight sideways. It's almost always going to be the fish looking up, reacting to it. And a jerk bait, a suspending jerk bait, that is, is an awesome tool for catching those bass that are on those really steep areas that they can look up and ambush. Another bait I really like for those steeper drop-off type areas is when the fish are relating really tight to that cover on the bottom. 
a football jig. A jig is an awesome bait that you can work off those steeper ledges, uh, steeper breaks and drop-offs, maintain bottom contact, and a jig in general is better worked slow uh, all year long and so it's a perfect bait to throw in this situation. Now all these steeper drop-off areas, they're easy to find by looking at a map or going out and scanning with side imaging on your boat. But I get a ton of questions, how do I fish those areas from the bank? I see out catching fish offshore and fishing these really unique pieces of cover on your boat. How do I find them from, from the shore? One thing I'd really recommend is, is going and checking out these deeper units. It's something you've seen me fish now this last several months and, and I love this thing. It's awesome for bank fishing because you can cast this guy out and, and you can see exactly where that first big drop off is. It transmits bottom contours and transmits different types of cover down there so you can tell if it's a weed edge or rock pile. You can really differentiate be between that stuff. And like I said, the, the first several videos I've made using this thing, fishing from the bank, I would have loved to have it as a kid. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it's a fish finder you cast out actually and you can pull it around, it's, it's like a bobber you cast out there, and it transmits a signal to your phone, and so you have a fish finder on your phone. You know, this thing will even, this thing will tell you water temperature, you can even go make your own maps with it, so you'll be able to go right back to where those steeper drop-offs are in your area, which is something we, we could never even do, or never even think of when I was growing up while bank fishing. So I'm gonna link this down below, go check it out, it's a really, really cool product. All right, so now we've talked about fishing slow, and then fishing the more vertical pieces of structure in the water. So now number three is going to bring me to my favorite type of cover to fish in these areas, and that is rock cover. You know, rock, man-made rock, natural rock, riprap is, a, is an awesome piece of cover for bass to hold on all year long. Uh, it holds crawfish, it holds bait fish really well, uh, and bass love to get on it in different times of the year especially. But this is my favorite time of the year to fish that rock cover. And I like to fish the rock cover when it's super, super cold outside for two reasons. The first reason is the one everyone thinks of, rock holds more heat than any other type of cover. So even in the winter, December, January, November, like it is now, even if the water is down in the 40s, a lot of time either that offshore rock pile or that one natural rock chunk rock bank is going to have a little bit warmer water and thus the fish will be a little bit more active. The, the crayfish will be a little bit more active in those areas. That's one reason a lot of people give for the rock being better this time of year. I don't know what it is, but the fish freaking love it. Now, the second reason is something that I've found over the years to be true, and that is no matter what time of year it is, even in the dead of summer, when there's a cold front or a really high pressure day, I kind of have the general rule of thumb that the harder the cover is, the more stable it will be. And what I mean by that is that rock cover or really hard wood cover, those fish really seem to suck into that and they just get around it better whenever the, the temperature cools way down or there's terrible pressure changes that make fishing extremely difficult, especially rock cover. For whatever reason, those fish seem to really congregate in those areas whenever there's a big cool down or when everything gets a lot tougher. For whatever the reason, fish love to get on that type of cover. I can't tell you how many big fish I've caught and tournament saving or winning fish I've caught just from fishing baits in, in tough conditions around that offshore rock cover. It's just flat out my favorite place to fish whenever it gets tough or cold. All right, I got one more tip to share with you guys to catch more fish as it cools down November, December, January, and that is use baits with a tighter action. So what I mean by that is baits with that really, really tight, quivering, shimmering action are so much more effective than baits with big, wide wobbles. So let's get into some examples of that. You know, the, the first and, and easiest example I can think of is, with that is the crankbait. So a big, wide, rounded body crankbait with a round lip or a square lip for that matter is going to have a much wider shimming action. That's not what I like to use when the water cools down in the 40s and then the upper 30s. Now the fish will still eat a moving bait a lot of time in those situations, but Using a bait with a really tight shimmy is going to blow that out of the water. My favorite flat side crankbait is the Six Cents Flat 75. I catch a ton of fish when it cools down. I'm gonna catch a ton of fish on it here um, this fall and then early in the next spring because it has a really tight shimmying action. But also baits that have been really, really popular over the years, 
the Shadrap. Shadrap's an awesome bait with very, very little action. And then of course, lipless crankbaits. You know, lipless crankbaits have the tightest shimmying action of any type of crankbait on the market. Uh, they catch a ton of fish and my favorite way to fish them uh, this time of year as we get into the super super cold is just casting it out letting it go to the bottom on that vertical type structure off the drop-offs just ripping them up one or two feet and let them fall down and you can even let it soak there 10-15 seconds until you feel a fish is looking at it rip it up off the bottom boom another bait that works extremely well in this scenario is a chatterbait you know chatterbait it does have a, a lot of noise to it and a lot of action but that action is a really really tight shimmying action so that's a bait i'll definitely throw if i'm fishing a lake that's like a shallow oxbow lake or something like that a lake that doesn't get maybe much over five to ten feet deep in most areas and you have to fish on a horizontal plane there's not a lot of big drop-offs a chatterbait or a lipless bait just pulled straight. It's going to have that nice tight shimmy. You know, a bait that, that's really popular around the Ozark areas and a lot of these Highland area lakes when it gets really cold is a jig with a twin tail grub. And while you might look at a twin tail grub and you think, you know, that has way more action than like a chunk style trailer or something, you got to realize the type of action that has. That has just a really tight natural shimmying action as opposed to like a, a rage craw or a pack a craw with the big wide wobbling arms. And a twin tail bait is not only something that works extremely well when it's really cold outside, but it's something I'll also go to whenever there's a cold front or a super tough bite any other type of the season as well. Well, that's it guys. Those are my four tips to help you catch more fish as we move from November into December and that water gets super, super cold. So remember, slow everything way down no matter what you're fishing. Fish the vertical cover that those fish can ambush up off of with a jerk bait or a jig is my favorite way to target those fish. Fish rock cover anytime you can find a harder bottom area uh, or a really chunky rock area. Those are absolutely money. And when you're fishing those areas, fish tight wobbling baits that have the tightest shimmy possible. And I can about guarantee you're going to catch more fish. Anyways, thanks a ton for taking the time to watch this video today. I hope these tips I shared can help you catch more fish as it cools down. I haven't done a good old fashioned tip video like this one for a long time. I love doing them and it's something I'll probably do a lot more this winter as it gets cooled down. And go down, hit the link for the deeper module as well. That's an awesome tool if you're stuck on the bank uh, or just for just about anyone. Any kids getting into fishing whatever it is it's a really really cool tool but for now i am out of here i'm gonna catch you guys in two days from now gonna be sticking some slaunches peace